Everybody's trying to steal my lady Spiders in the mirror and things can be right Back to the scene of a Friday night To a blessed collision still frozen time Spill drink is cupid and the sound of earthless time And why did you argue? We're dreaming of those eyes Best part of my life And when we make love, babe The world don't make a sound The clock won't turn around Things down when I want to race Catching up again when you try me to chase Feels like we're playing space You always find a way to make up right Even when we start to fly Even when things just run I You gotta stop it up Hello my friends Hello my friends Oh, hello Kazi You must think I'm talking to you Yeah Kazi's out with me right now. Wanda's in her crate for a little break so I can just work. Because um, she still really enjoys just being in her crate. She likes it. She's probably one of the few dogs that I've had who really enjoys being in her crate. And I think sometimes when her and Kazi get playing a little too much, it's just good for her to be in the crate. Especially if I need to like focus. And I've got some sculptures that I'm working on um, that have to go out soon. So that's me just introducing the vlog and explaining way too much about my dogs. But hello my friends, it has been a very long time since I have vlogged and I have missed you. I have missed you a lot. Um, I just, I had surgery uh, almost four weeks ago and I'm feeling really good now. It was a major, major surgery and I knew it was going to be rough and I knew it was going to be a major surgery. And I was afraid, like, I was freaking out. I was so anxious for, like, a month leading up to it because, you know, I was just worried about complications. I was worried about the recovery. I was worried about everything. And then it happened, and it was honestly so much more difficult <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. It really, really was. Um, it was the biggest surgery by far I've ever had in my life. Um, I'm not going to go into details about it in this vlog. I talked about it a little bit on Instagram. I may talk about it in the future, but honestly, it was a very traumatic experience for me. And I just, I just want to kind of put it behind me and move on. And I just want to vlog and tell you about my life. So I'm still not uh, cleared to go back to the gym yet. So I'm spending a lot of time now that I'm feeling good enough to like sit in a chair at my desk. I did have a few comments recently asking like why I took down some of my videos. I did take a lot of them down just for personal reasons. I just... I longer felt comfortable having them up, so I apologize if you found them comforting, but they're they're gone. Um, but it was a lot easier for me to talk personally and vlog personally when I only had like 500 to 1,000 people subscribing and not that many people watching, you know? So now that there are obviously more people watching, um, it gets a little scary to share personal things, you know? But anyway, I just about have to go pick up my son from school. I was going to start this vlog earlier today because I just finished this book, The Mountain in the Sea. This is like a sci-fi thriller about some scientists and it's sort of in like a near future type of setting. They go to this island where there has been this discovery of octopus who have like human level intelligence and they're trying to work out the communications between them but the octopus are kind of a little murderous so I feel like the synopsis of this makes you think that it's going to be 
like a, a thriller with these octopuses like kind of on a rampage with a sci-fi element and that's very much not what this is. This is really very thoughtful, this is very introspective, this is a lot, um, this has a lot to say about the human condition and about how we treat the world and how we treat other species that are living with us, even some that are you know, near as or close to our own intelligence, and he keeps hitting his head. He's just loving on me so much. That's Kazi. I'm sorry. Um, so it had a lot to say about that, but I don't think it was a thriller for sure. So I enjoyed this. I gave it five stars. I don't know why I'm talking to you about this right now, because I was going to, I'm still going to put this in a wrap up, hopefully, but I just wanted to vlog. And uh, it's afternoon. So I finished this book this morning. Um, and I haven't, and and I ha and I am listening to the audio for this book, but I may, I'm not sure if this is the audio I'm going to go with. This is the second book in the Jade, is it the Jade Saga, Greenbone Saga, Saga Saga. I don't know how to say that word. Um, I read the first book in February. It was the book that I read like right after surgery, and I freaking loved it. It was so good. One of the best fantasies I've read in so long. The whole series is sort of like a, it's in a world that feels urban and very similar to ours, but it has a fantastical element to it. But it's not, it's also not like an urban fantasy because it's not our world, it's different. So there are different islands and different places in here that are not what we have right now, but it's not like futuristic. So it feels a lot like how Six of Crows is in that way, even though that's a historical type of setting where you have a world that is very similar to our world. So you have Ketterdam and you have um, Ravka, which is like Russia and German and, you know, all those things. But they have like different names for them. So that's sort of how the world feels in this series. And the, it's basically about warring clans. It feels very similar to like a mafia type of thing. This is an Asian inspired fantasy. So a little bit of what is the, the only like a Japanese? Is it the Japanese mafia that is, um, what is it called? You know it. I know you know it. It's gonna come to me, but it's not coming to me right now. Anyway, I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if you don't, it's like, it's basically like these warring Japanese clans, or it's not even Japanese, they're Asian based, and, uh, they are are really focused on like loyalty to their family and honor and it's just so freaking cool the political aspect to it these are pretty brutal some really bad things happen to the people that we grow to love and care about so this is the second book in the series and uh i'm only that far into it so i'm really enjoying this but i'm i'm not sure I, that's one of the reasons i was hesitant to start this vlog is because i'm like it's the second book in a series and I don't know how many people are interested in it, but I just wanted to vlog, so I'm going to vlog about this. I really like the characters, I like the relationship between the siblings and some of their romantic interests, and I also like, obviously, the platonic relationships with uh, some found family aspects, and even, like, the sort of, like, bad clan, like, I find that very interesting, too, so I just am having a great time reading this, and, uh, yeah. So that's what my audiobook is, and then the physical book that I am reading, it's actually on, it's on my Kindle, but it is, like, a physical book, is the arc for Kennedy Ryan's new book. Um, this book comes out tomorrow, March 5th, and I actually, like a lot of people, Kennedy Ryan had this come out for, like, a day or two on NetGalley as a, you know, read now, so anybody who had a NetGalley account could go in there and download it, and all you have to do is, like, leave a review for it, or, you know, anybody could get accepted for it. So I started it, like, right after that came out, and I think that was, like, last fall, like, August or September, maybe. But I just wasn't really vibing with it because of some plot things. I just, I didn't love some of the plot things in there, the setup, and I was just sort of like, you know, all of Kennedy Ryan's books are heavy, and heaviness doesn't bother me. I can read very heavy things, right? But there was something about the very specific situation that our heroine finds herself in, where her husband has, you know, been cheating on her for a very long time. He has been deceiving her in every possible way. And this, you find out what he did, like, right in the beginning of the book. So she kind of has to essentially start over. She's dedicated her life to raising her children, building a home, and her marriage. And even though she felt like her husband pulling away from her, she never really thought that the betrayal would be this severe. So it kind of... 
it wasn't like a fun thing to read, right? Because a lot of that's one reason why I tend to stay away from domestic thrillers and a lot of literary fiction because they focus on that so much. Like very unhappy marriages where usually the husband is cheating and then he kills his wife and I'm just sort of like I hate that plot thread so freaking much. Like I just really really hate it. I don't like it. I just I I don't I don't understand I mean, I do, but I, I wish we didn't always default to that in as a plot device in some of these books, you know? Like, why do we have to have that be the focus of... Anyway, anyway, no no, no shade to Kennedy Ryan because I love and adore her, but I just wasn't feeling it. I just didn't want to read about that at the time, you know? And my reading mood has been just all over the place for months and months and months, and I've really enjoyed sort of listening to myself and stepping outside of just romance, Hence all of the fantasy and sci-fi and literary fiction that I've been reading. Like, I've just had such a great time with that. But I did want to read this book to at least leave a review. And I love Kennedy Ryan, you know. I for sure wanted to have it read by the time it came out. And I just kind of lost track of time. That, oh, it comes out tomorrow. So I'm currently 40% through the arc of this book. And while it did, there's nothing about this book that was boring or dull. Like, her writing is just so immediately captivating. She has such a way with words and such a great sense of building her characters so they feel real immediately. So you really root for them and you want to see what's going to happen to them. Like, I just love how she does that. I love it so freaking much. So stepping into a Kennedy Ryan book is literally like one of the greatest pleasures <laughs> as a reader. I just feel like nothing compares to her writing. She's just fantastic. So I'm enjoying it. The romance at this point is... Uh, slow. I would say this is for sure a slow build. I don't know that I would call it a slow burn. A slow build, which is fine for me. Like, I'm totally okay with that. And, um, yeah. I'm mostly interested in the overall plot in this book, so that's <laughs> that's interesting. Um, anyway, that's what I'm reading. I don't know when I'll update you next, but I just wanted to pop in and say hello and just sort of take this opportunity to just, like, get back into the swing of things of filming videos, because I have missed it. I've missed filming content. I've missed talking to you guys about books. And I've also just really missed sort of dissecting my thoughts about the books that I'm reading out loud. I think that is really something that I enjoy, and I've missed doing that. So, all right. Uh, I'll pop back in next. I have more to say, and I'll see y'all in a bit. Hello, my friends. Okay, so... I finished This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan, and I I feel so conflicted. I feel so conflicted. Kennedy Ryan is my all-time favorite author. I think she is incredible in every way. I'm trying not to repeat what I said in my first clip. I think that she is such a gifted and talented writer. I think she gets storytelling down perfectly. She has great character development. Her prose is beautiful. And she really does a good job of working themes into her stories. I think she's just incredible. And the thing that really always just, like, kills me with her books is how devastating and completely beautiful hits you right in the soul her romances are. Her couples feel like they are meant to be. With almost all of her books, I've felt that. You know, there are a few that I feel like haven't quite hit that mark for me, but overwhelmingly that's what I return to her for over and over again, is the way that she writes romance in a way that makes you feel and makes you believe in love and soulmates. It's just such a beautiful thing. So I will say I initially rated this book five stars, and I think that's largely just because it's Kennedy Ryan, and I love her. And it's hard not to get swept away in her writing and storytelling, you know? I mean, her books just flow. It doesn't feel like there's any effort. I never feel like I want to put it down. It's just it's just a beautiful, captivating story. But the more that I thought about this book, the more I realized this just isn't a book for me. This isn't a book that I love. This isn't a five-star read for me personally. So I dropped my rating to four stars, which is still very solid. And it is. It's a very solid book. But this doesn't feel like a romance as much as some of her books, her the books of hers that are my favorites have, you know, like real, feels deep, like one of the best romances I've ever read in my life, the Grip Trilogy, um, the Kingmaker series, and also the book before this, um, oh my gosh, why can't I think of the title, the book before this, <laughs> before I let go, 
I feel like that is such a great and beautiful romance. And I know that some people don't agree and some people feel like Before I Let Go is more women's fiction. I don't agree. I feel like it is it is a romance. It does have strong char character building elements of both the hero and the heroine. And that I think is what makes the difference in this could be us, this book. I, I can't even remember the title. The thing that really sort of disappointed me about this book is how... Well, first of all, I think I need to be very clear that, as I mentioned previously, the way that this whole story is set up to be about um, basically her journey of self-healing and trying to find herself again after her husband's incredible betrayal, that is the entire plot of this book, is Soledad's journey to find herself, to love herself, to find happiness as she has put herself, like, on the back burner for 20-some years as she's been married to this man and raised their children, you know? And I know that's a message that a lot of readers are going to resonate with, and it's going to be powerfully impactful to them. But, you know, like I said earlier, that's probably my least favorite plot of all time. I absolutely hate reading about a cheating, betraying husband and the wife who's been completely faithful to him, over-the-top faithful in every way, stuck by his side, ignored all the warning signs um, for years, decades, and then all of a sudden her world just shatters and she has to try and pick up the pieces, you know? And that is a powerful story, but I don't like that story. I don't enjoy reading it. I feel like way too many books focus on that. And I think that this book, how Kennedy Ryan wrote it, it was never going to be anything but Soledad's journey of overcoming that and growing and healing again and letting go of the pain, the deep pain and betrayal that she had and trying to heal from that, right? So I don't fault Kennedy Ryan in that way. And truthfully, I didn't even know what the plot was of this book until I initially picked it up back in the fall. Uh, but even even if I, even at then, I still was going to read it because it's Kennedy Ryan and I'm going to read everything that she writes, you know, because I just love and adore her so much. So it is still a very compelling story. But it is overwhelmingly about Soledad's journey. And Judah, the hero, we don't really get to see much of any, really we don't see any character growth from him at all. He seems to be very much just sort of the foil, the reward for Soledad when she recovers. And, and I feel like that is one of the key differences between Before I Let Go and this book, and why I think Before I Let Go works better and isn't technically women's fiction, whereas I feel like this one, this one feels like women's fiction. The romance in here was good, what we got, but this is not one of my favorite Kennedy Ryan romances at all, you know? So Judah is the man who finds out some of the betraying that Soledad's husband had done with his business and which landed him in a lot of hot water and therefore like her, put her family, her and her daughters at risk. So that's how Soledad and Judah meet in the beginning. So Soledad and Judah meet in the very beginning when she's still married, but she can sense things are not right in her marriage. And, but she's determined to remain faithful. So she meets Judah and they have this very electric connection, this powerful connection. And she feels a lot of guilt for that connection because she wants to be faithful to her husband. And then everything unravels. She finds out that her husband had betrayed her in more ways than one, very, very deeply and severely. And then time passes where she's trying to, you know, recover and heal, but also to build a life for herself and her daughters where she can have her own finances because her husband, you know, she was the stay-at-home mom, she was the homemaker, and she found so much joy in that. So one aspect of that that I really, really loved is watching Soledad not turn her back on what she loved and building a home in cleaning and cooking in building a beautiful home like she turns that into a career becoming like a social media influencer and i actually really really loved that for her i loved that it was true to her character i loved that she got to keep even as she fought and struggled so hard for it she got to keep her home and her girls and and build this career in business i'm doing something that she loved and that's something that really hits me personally because you know i am a stay-at-home mother my children are mostly grown the youngest that i have is 15 and I've been married for 24 years this year, you know? So so that felt like something I could feel some kinship with because I have also created a career out of something that I loved that I do at home. You know, it's not homemaking or cooking or anything like that. But so I loved that for her. And, and the moments that we get with Judah and Soledad are truly so beautiful, but they were so spare. They were so spare. And they really were secondary to the overall plot of Soledad 
finding herself again, you know? And that in itself is a beautiful story, but it just, it just, it didn't like miss the mark because I enjoyed the story, but there were a few elements that just made me feel a little disappointed with this overall. And I think again, like the very personal thing of like, I just absolutely despise that plot device. It's so overdone. It's, it's overdone and I know what happens in real life and I know what happens often in real life, but I don't want to read about that. You know, I don't enjoy reading about that and I just, I don't know. So I didn't love that part of it, but I also just sort of feel like for one of the first times that I've read a Kennedy Ryan book, I feel like the character work other than Soledad, so like her children, and Judah, I feel like most of the other characters felt a little bit one-dimensional. They didn't really have a lot of depth to them, like her children, who are struggling and trying to come to terms with what their father did and abandon them, and and Judah himself, who has a big character arc. He has two autistic children, and he's divorced, and I felt like there there could have been a lot of things done with both of them. So, yeah, this book, this book was a bit of a disappointment for me, unfortunately. Like, it's still a solid read. The romance is beautiful that we get, but it's not, it's definitely not my favorite by Kennedy Ryan, you know? So four out of five stars for that. And I feel like when I picked that up in the fall, I kind of had a feeling like, I don't know <laughs> that I am going to love this. And I, I don't know that I want to be disappointed by a favorite author, you know? Um, I still feel like of the most recent of Kennedy's books, real is still my favorite. I really did enjoy Before I Let Go. It was one of my favorite books of that year when it came out. But Real, as far as her newer releases, stands apart as just a complete masterpiece of a romance. It just... <sighs> Maybe I should go reread that. But anyway, so yeah, I finished that and just thought I would let y'all know my thoughts on it. And uh, now I'm going to continue reading Jade War. And I'll update you on that when I've finished with that, I guess. <laughs> I kind of want to have this vlog up soon, so maybe maybe I'll hustle and get that finished, because I'm about, I'm not quite halfway through Jade War, but I'll update y'all. I'll see you in my next clip. It is time It's the perfect summer night Those three words are spelled out in your eyes But before I go on, say something Would you look at that glow? The sun is setting. Like, look at my skin glowing. This, I like that. <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm here to close out the vlog. I just barely finished Jade War. And I've been thinking so much about what I want to talk to you guys about this book because it is the second book in a series. So, basically, I'm just going to tell you why... I love this book, why I love this series, because I've been thinking about that a lot lately. What is it about this series that has just like gripped me by the throat and like not letting me go? And it's a combination of mostly the characters. I am in love with the Call family and the Found family that they have. You have Hilo, Lon, Shay, those are the three siblings and they rule the 
no peak clan that is at war with the mountain clan it's sort of like an asian this is an asian inspired fantasy with sort of mafia warring clans and jade is how they get their power it's very it allows them to be more powerful like it amplifies their natural abilities and gives them sort of like super abilities like they can hear they can sense things in their body they have the strength it's basically like gives them superpowers and they're powerful warriors, but they're also incredibly clever strategists and also very keen politicians in that they know how to get relationships to work, to get what they want to try and ultimately have peace between the clans, even though there's a lot of killing, there's a lot of backstabbing, there's a lot of betrayal. There's a lot of things that they have to do in order to try and get the peace because it seems like once they've entered into this war, this turf war, there's no going back. The only thing they can do is try and bring that other clan down. So it's just, this book is so emotional. And there were parts of this book that felt a little bit like it got, I love a political plot. I love to see how the world works. I love to see the maneuvering and the machinations. Like I really do enjoy that in fantasy. But there was part of this in the middle that kind of felt like it was really slowing down and I think that for so much of this book you were just absolutely compelled to read it like cannot put it down that's how I felt about it and there was only that little part in the middle where I was like oh, more more talking more bargaining more trying to make deals you know but I just I love those siblings I love Hilo who he's my favorite he's the middle brother and in his family his gra he was his grandfather's least favorite. He was just seen to be like this thug, this muscle who didn't have the like the emotional range or the logical range to be the head. And just watching him make all of these decisions and these choices and how much he loves his family, his children and his wife, like it just makes me feel so much. And that is all that I want in a book. You know, I love feeling things for the characters. I just adored this. This was fantastic. I gave this one five stars. The first one was six stars. This one may actually be a six star read too. I literally just finished it and I'm trying to decide is it six stars or five star? I feel like it may be a six star, but I, I just adore the series. It's fantastic. You know, this is a very popular series. It has a lot of reviews. It's been talked about on booktube for a really, really long time. And this is one of the few series that I can say is every bit worth the hype. It is 100% amazing, fantastic, and I just love it. I love it so much. There, there. This book also has a lot of moments with the characters where you get to know them and love them, and then all of a sudden the author just kills them in a way that is very brutal and very sharp, and you're not expecting it. And in that way, it kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones. But it, and I hate that because it makes me feel, but at the same time, I really respect an author who is writing a fantasy and is not afraid to, like, go there and really devastate you with the loss of a character. I mean, now, if I'm reading a romance, I don't want death. <laughs> but when I'm reading a fantasy, I go into that expecting probably not everybody is going to make it out alive, especially if it's an adult fantasy. I expect there to be deaths of characters that I love. You know, YA, I think, is definitely a little more safe in that way, but I go into an adult fantasy. And that's another interesting thing is that while I was reading this, I was I was like, uh, every time someone would die, and the first one I would be like, oh, oh, I wasn't expecting that. I'm like, that's just because I've been reading romance for so long that I've, I've gotten used to characters not dying, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? But gosh, I just love this series so freaking much. So it's just so interesting to me how the two books I picked for this vlog, I was not expecting to be this emotionally hit. Like, emotional damage. Everything that happened in here, especially towards the end, like the last little bit, but all throughout it, just had me like reeling and tearing up and so much emotion. Every single possible emotion. There's anger, there's rage, there's just love and sorrow. It's just so fantastic. I love it so much. So at the end of this book, it's deep into the Jade War between these clans. The war kind of starts at the end of Jade City. So now we have seen these siblings leading on their own for a while and how they are trying to win this war and not have to be in danger all the time, not to feel like their families' lives are at risk all the time, and try to basically just defeat the other warring tribe to bring their leader down so that they can install a new leader and finally have peace or at least a ceasefire between the two of them, you know? Holy crap. It was just so good. So 
anyways, back to my original thought. It is interesting to me that the book I expected to feel most emotional about, The Kennedy Ryan, which has always proven to be a very emotional reading experience for me, was definitely not. I didn't feel much of anything at all, <laughs> sadly. I mean, I did. I definitely did feel things, but it didn't wreck havoc on my emotions like I expect and want a Kennedy Ryan to, you know? This book gave me everything I wanted as far as emotions go, and I just love it so much. It's so clever. The writing in here is so beautiful. Beautiful in the way that she is not overdoing it at all. Like, her prose is very direct, it's very precise, but then there are also parts of it that are just so devastatingly beautiful that I'm just like, ugh. It just... I love it so much. This is fantastic. I need to read everything this author has written. There is one more book in this series, and I am going to start it immediately. So five, six stars for this. Absolutely loved it. And I'm going to be thinking about it for a really long time. So all right, my friends, there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me for a vlog. I know it's been a really, really long time. Um, I hope to be able to make content more regularly um, from here on out, but we shall see. If you have made it this far in the video um, and you want to leave me an emoji and let me know you were here, please leave me a yellow heart because it's March and that's Endometriosis Awareness Month and I'll see you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.